we keep in the same places. Yeah, you might as well stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Fernoy. Thank you, Dr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so uh, policy 2.065 uh, is our COVID-19 visitation protocols on district, there it is. Okay. On district property. Um, and so I wanted to go over some, uh, some of this with you. I know we had a, um, you know, there's been some discussion about this. And as I go ahead, as I move into the purpose, uh, and, and I, you'll probably hear me say this several, time, several times tonight, is you know, we can't lose sight of the primary mission of this, and that is to keep our students, our staff, our teachers safe uh, from you know, the, the pandemic as much as possible on our campuses. So the purpose of this uh, policy is to provide guidelines for visitors or any person who is not an employee or student of the school district entry to any or school uh, any school or district property and we're doing this in order to protect the health safety and welfare of our students and employees by adhering to COVID-19 district safety protocols in compliance with the CDC state and local guidelines so all students employees and visitors deserve a safe and learning work environment I think we all agree on that and the district will limit and monitor the flow of non-essential visitors volunteers and activities involving external groups or organizations. This policy does not apply to normal student vehicle drop off uh, at arrival and pick up at dismissal. So this policy applies to all visitors. And so, and so, um, you know, one of the questions I get uh, regularly is what exactly is a visitor? And, uh, and so for the purpose of this policy, me talking about that a visitor is any person who is not an employee or student of that specific school district property. So, um, so you know, we get these questions about who is a visitor and who isn't. In general, if your workstation isn't on that campus, you're a visitor. And so, if I go to a school, for example, even though I'm the chief of police, I'm a visitor to that school. And so, um, you know, I have to adhere to these policies. So I tried to make it as, uh, we tried to make it as clear as possible. The bottom line is if there's any doubt whether you're a visitor or not, just go through the screening process to make sure that you're not uh, bringing any um, contaminants with you onto the school property. So the visitor notification, uh, the district will disseminate uh, information about this policy, include a visitor responsibilities via the call out, email, social media, and on the website. Upon returning to school buildings or facilities, school or district staff will implement a variety of strategies, written electronic notifications, posted signage to inform visitors about their duty to comply with the district safety protocols. Included in that is what are the district safety protocols. So district safety guidelines, access to all district property will be limited to current students, current employees, pre-approved parents, guardians, guests, vendors, and contractors, and invited guests with principal or designee approval. Until further notice, no other visitors will be permitted on district premises. Parents, guardians, volunteers will not be able to participate in classrooms and school events. Go ahead. Uh, in addition, all visitors must self-screen and temperature check prior to arrival to district property. The reason we're throwing that, putting this in, the, in this policy is that we want you to do that self-screening before you even come to the property. So if you find that you're running a fever, you are, you know, you can't answer uh, the uh, CDC questions appropriately, before we get to that in, uh, point, we'd like for you to self-screen and hopefully not come to the school at all. Uh, not have a temperature of 100.4 or higher, uh, be symptomatic or while using fever-reducing medications, not have tested positive for COVID-19 in the last 14 days, and not had contact with someone positive in the last uh, 10 days. All visitors must report directly to the check-in location to sign in, remain behind the plexiglass barrier, and have permission for the visit. That's at your, uh, for those schools that have the outer perimeter, that will be conducted at the outer perimeter. For the remainder of schools, they designate a safety area uh, at or near the front entrance of the building. The only exception to that is the food services uh, vendors uh, deliveries will report to the designated delivery area, and they will be screened by a district school services employee 
in the same manner as all other visitors. Um, in addition, all visitors must have their temperature taken and will be asked to leave the district property if 100.4 or above. They will have to answer mandatory screening questions. Uh, all visitors must uh, sanitize hands. And, uh, and then I have in this proposal here that we're snugly fitting three-ply facial coverings over their mouth and nose at all times. But I would ask the, the board to consider is the uh, latest CDC guidelines, which say um, uh, that we would change that verbiage to all visitors must comply with CDC guidelines. And those gu guidelines require facial coverings that are at least two to three layers thick. Chief, uh, Mrs. Bro wants to ask a question. Yes. Thank you. So I actually would, I appreciate your saying that because I was actually going to propose the change recommended by council um, to because of the, the limited availability also, but that the minimum standard is two. So I appreciate your changing it here, but I will, when we get to the policies, make the recommendation that we change the verbiage to what was recommended by council. Thank you, Mr. Brill. Um, and then uh, in addition, all visitors must comply with all directives in this policy and site-specific directions from administrators. Um, all visitors must abide by social distancing guidelines and all visitors must avoid uh, congregating. Additional visitor protocols. Any visitor who enters or remains on district property without legitimate purpose may be found to be trespassing and therefore in violation of Florida statutes and subject to arrest and penalties as defined by Florida state statutes. Political activities and or campaigning by candidates are prohibited on school campuses or in school district facilities. This includes the, distribu the distribution of campaign materials, displayed posters, or other paraphernalia, including the presence of a candidate on campus for campaign purposes. The only exception is when a recognized uh, group rents a facility after school hours or when on election day, the school district follows the county election law regarding voting polls located at many Palm Beach County schools and school events. Uh, visitors, including parents and guardians, do not have unrestricted access to school district property and must, be, uh, must remain in approved areas only. In our training, what we're recommending is when you visit, if you're cleared to visit a school and you make it through the screening process, whoever you are there to visit is responsible for you while you're on that campus up and until the time you leave that campus. Uh, addition of business protocols here, uh, school district reserves the right to deny any individual entry to any school building when there is reason to believe that such individual's presence would be detrimental to the operation of the school, the learning environment, or the health and safety of the school community. Any visitor who engages in uncooperative behavior or disruptive behavior or does not adhere to or threatens not to follow the prevention protocols will be required to leave the premises. Staff are authorized to seek assistance from school police officers if a visitor engages in such behavior or objects to leaving the facility as directed and to exclude such individuals from vi visiting district facilities for some period of time thereafter. Failure by a visitor to abide by any sections of this policy will result in immediate removal from the school campus and district uh, facility. Okay. And finally, uh, the, uh, uh, the applicability and then duration. The applica applicability here is the provisions of this policy supersede the provisions of any other board policy relating to these matters except for policy 1.03 on school board meetings and any policies that must be followed as required by federal or state law. And then under duration, the superintendent may suspend, revoke, rescind portions of this policy based on the updated or available information from the CDC, state or local authorities regarding COVID-19 uh, cases. And on the back, on the very last portion of this slide, you can see um, the resources that we accessed to develop this policy. And that's my report. Board members, any questions? Dr. Robinson. So first, let me thank you for adding references, okay? Um, but let me say, I'm not gonna support this two-layer mask thing. 
So let me, and I need, I need people to understand what the deal is with these masks. So um, you, will, you will always see me wearing a KN95. You will not see me wearing a cloth mask, nor will you see me wearing a surgical mask. So this public health recommendation is based upon wearing masks to protect others, okay? So I wanna be real clear about that. So the, the, the cloth mask and the surgical mask they provide the wearer with some protection, but they are really to protect the observer of the person wearing the mask, right? So the KN95s, the N95s, and even face shields do a better job of protecting the wearer. Now the face shields don't do as good a job as, of protecting the observer because it can have space below it where the you know, respiratory, the virus could could go out, right? Now, we're talking about visitors on our campus, and we're gonna set a lower standard because the CDC, which has been politicized, okay, let's be clear, has been pol politicized, has moved away from pure science, and I don't know anybody who doesn't realize that, so we're gonna, we're gonna set a lower standard for visitors whose mask is designed to protect our staff and students that they're visiting? I'm not going for that. I'm, just, I'm not, I, no, I'm not going for that. Like, I, I understand, I understand how, who, which mask protects who, right? My family and I will be wearing KN95 because I want to protect you, but I'm taking action to also protect me. And I think that if we're gonna have the visitor policy, which I agree we should have, we need to be clear that we expect our visitors to protect the people they're visiting. And I don't think, I think the more layers, the better. I would like to mandate KN95s, but I can't go there, right? So I'm just, I'm not accepting a minimal standard. You guys can do it if you want to, but I'm not, because I know that that is not the appropriate thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. I think some of us also have the same feelings, and we're going to discuss that when we get to the policy later. Ms. Bro. Well, I'll just make the one comment that some of our schools do not have three-layer masks available for students and employees, that they have two-layer masks. So, you know, that's something that we're going to have to take a look at. That's what I've been told. Um, I personally have no problem with it saying that it's at least two layers of breathable material, and that's at least, right? So if you go to certain shops, you're gonna get three layers, but the availability is also an issue. And then what do you do if you get someone that comes in? Are we gonna check how many layers their mask has? So, you know, that's, that's a legitimate question, right? When they go in and you walk in and they check your temperature, how do you know if that box of, of masks that they got is three layers. I know that mine happens to be, but then I bought some others that aren't, don't say it. Dr. Robinson. Thank you. This is about setting an expectation, and it's about setting an expectation for safety. Now, this is what we've been talking about for months, right? And so I'm not lowering my expectation. I'm also very clear that I don't expect policing of masks. I don't expect anybody to go up to somebody and say, what do you, let me see and check it. No, 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 I don't expect that. But when we write a policy, we're setting, we're setting an expectation and we need to send the message out that we expect it to be three, three layers, right? And right now we're talking about visitors. Now, we all, there, there's some other issues with two layer masks that are made of more than cloth. We can have that conversation when we get to the policy, but I just wanna be clear, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to set well with lowering the expectation for safety. I'm not doing it. No. Just as a follow-up, if ahead, I Ms. may, Bro. then Ms. if we wind up at the end of this meeting not changing the guidelines, then are we going to do an audit to see which schools have two-layer masks and which schools have three-layer masks? Because that's what's out there. But right now we're on visitors. This is the visitor. So that's appropriate for a different policy. This is the visitor. Going to be looking at the other policies. I believe tonight we're looking at the student, correct? Yeah. Students that don't show up with a mask are provided with one. 
are we providing a three-layer mask mm -hmm. or are we providing a two-layer mask? That's a question. If you're going to set in policy three layers, then you're going to have to make sure that you're meeting the requirements of your policy. I, I can have Mr. Bird speak to what we purchased. So, Mr. Barbier, may I suggest that we had that conversation when we get to the student policy? Because right now we're in a workshop talking about the visitor policy, okay. right? And so what I'm saying to you is we need to set the expectation for visitors that they take the precaution of protecting our staff and students, right? I'm not policing them, but if they, if they our information that will go out through communications will say we expect you to wear a three-layer mask. They have three-layer masks in Walmart. They have it at 7-Eleven. I mean, so I'm, I'm just saying, I just don't want to set a lowered expectation. We're going to talk about the students when we get to the student policy. Okay, then. We're going to wait and talk about that other one in a little while. Any other questions? Ms. Whitfield, I'm sorry. I keep looking up there, but did I miss a hand? It's okay. I can wait till we discuss it. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I think we're at the end of that one, Mr. Superintendent. Yes, sir, at this time, I will bring forward